Hello. In the previous episode, we had a look at uh, what progressive web apps are and how they work. And now we are going to turn an existing Rails app into a progressive web uh, app. Uh, before we start, I have to mention that uh, Apple has made an uh, update recently that can make uh, any app a PWA without uh, having to have a manifest JSON. So uh, they have this new feature that if you open an app in Safari and add it to Doc, then it will actually work as a PWA out of the box. So let's try to do this. I will go to Safari. I will open an app that is uh, definitely not a PWA. This app does not have a manifest.json. And uh, if I click on the share button, I will click uh, add to doc. It will find the logo. It will find the default title of the app that uh, I've got here. And uh, I click add. The app will be added uh, to my doc here. And also it will be visible in the launch pad. Here it is. And if I open the app, you see it opens as a separate uh, app. It doesn't have all the browser controls and uh, I can uh, uh, tab around and uh, I will see it as an app. So it looks quite nice. And moreover, now when I have the app open via Safari, I will refresh, you see, each time I open the app, it will uh, give me a prompt to open it as a web app instead of just open it in the browser. So this is really, really cool. Anyway, not uh, everybody is using Mac OS, not everybody is using Safari, and not everybody knows how to add the app to Doc. So uh, let's uh, add a manifest to an existing app. Here I have uh, cprails.com that uh, is uh, opened in the Chrome browser and that uh, has this uh, install app button. Uh, when I click it, you see I have a description, I've got a screenshot, these are provided only inside Chrome, inside the other browsers you would not have this uh, additional information. Uh, I'll click cancel and you see uh, Campfire has something similar, it has the install button, but it doesn't have the screenshots visible and it doesn't have the description. Uh, okay, and I'm going to make uh, this app uh, into a PWA. So it's uh, an app that I created a while ago to transform and uh, in, uh, to import photos from Instagram into uh, this app and uh, to have it kind of as a block, whatever. Um, let's uh, run the app locally. So I've got it here. I will go to localhost. Here's the app. Uh, okay, I will go to inspect application, you see it doesn't have a manifest at the moment. So let's add a manifest. And uh, here we have an example of uh, what a manifest can look like. So I will copy it, I will go to my application, to the public folder, here I will create manifest.json, I will paste uh, this in, I will uh, clean the file up, so I will leave just one icon, the icon is going to be just a logo. Where do I have a logo? I have it in app assets images. I will copy it from the app assets images to the public folder. And uh, the name is, uh, let's see, uh, logo 214x214. So this is going to be also the size. Uh, the name will be insta to blog short name insta to blog start url will be slash display standalone color whatever uh, description is going to be let's see uh, one click blog from your instagram okay now i'm going to refresh and go back to the inspector application you see the manifest is still unknown because we need to add a link to the manifest JSON from our application html.erb. And let's see how it was done by DHH when he introduced default PWAs into new Rails apps. So uh, they added this link to manifest slash manifest.json. I'm going to add this line and I will also add this Apple mobile web app capable, yes. Now uh, I'll refresh the app and you see it found the manifest. It found the name, uh, short name, and so on, computed ID. So it actually says that it would make sense to also add an ID. Let's uh, go and say uh, ID equals slash. 
little refresh. You see there is no node anymore here. Uh, we've got the icon. Uh, you see if I click show only the minimum safe area for maskable icons, it uh, crops most of the icons. So maybe it would make sense to have some more space on the sides. You could do it later. And there are a couple of errors that it gives us. So we need a screenshot with form set factor set to wide and form factor set to something different to be able to have a description visible next to the install app and uh, a screenshot. So let's add uh, these. I will take a screenshot of the app. I will take uh, another screenshot of the app. Let me open one of the accounts. So we'll have one wide and one narrow screenshot. Okay, now uh, I'm going to add the screenshots uh, uh, into the app. So uh, this is going to be wide and this is going to be narrow. Let's add these. And we're going to add the screenshots. Let's see how we can add the screenshots. So I will copy this. Um, here, screenshots. We will have one that is uh, wide. Dot png. Uh, okay, form factor is going to be wide. Type image png. This is going to be narrow. I'm also going to get the names right. So label one and label tau and uh, what else do we need to do here you see we have this hacker yeah that's a typo and what are the sizes of the images let's see so the narrow one has the size uh, here it is i will copy it and the other one Let's get the info. Okay, let's see if it works. I'm going to refresh the app again. And here you see, it uh, has this rich review. We have uh, the description of the app and we have the uh, screenshot from the app. So looks quite good. We managed to add the uh, working manifest.json. And now let's also add a working service worker. So um, let's just add the service worker that doesn't do much, but uh, exists. Now you see it already tells me that there is a service worker because this one must have been cached. I'm going to clear the cache. Okay, now I've cleared the cache and you see there is no service worker. That must have been from another application that I had run in locally, maybe the campfire or whatever. Okay, let's try adding a service worker. So uh, if I go to the MDN docs once again, there is this example of how I can launch a service worker. So I will copy this and put it into, let's say my application.js. So this is the code like to handle uh, launching the service worker if we can launch a service worker. And the path is going to be service worker.js. Let's uh, create this file again in the public folder serviceworker.js and uh, inside what uh, can we have um, we can check if the service worker has uh, been uh, installed so i will say self.add event listener install uh, service worker installed and uh, we can add another event listener uh, for the activate yeah ChatGPT is helpful. Okay, uh, let's see if this works now. I'm going to go back to the app. Uh, I will open the console and let's refresh. Okay, you see it was installed, activated, and your service worker has been installed. And if I go uh, to my application tab, here you see I have a service worker running. Obviously, the service worker doesn't do much at the moment and uh, 
it's just a boilerplate to start uh, adding functionality to our service worker, but it is already running, so this is already good. Uh, okay, uh, now we basically added the uh, manifest and service worker, and now our app uh, is uh, a legit PWA, but it is not really the Rails way. So the Rails way would be to store the manifest and uh, service worker inside app views layouts and uh, uh, yeah app views slash pwa and this way you would be able to uh, use erb to get the image paths and the uh, names whatever uh, instead of having it in the public folder so let's maybe try doing it the rails way now if you also want to get the pwa controller from rails directly and not create it on your own you would need to upgrade to the latest version of rails so if i go to the gem file i would need to have uh, uh, my app running on the main branch of rails because this feature has not been uh, released to a stable version yet so uh, what i can do now i can uh, go to my roots i can uh, copy from this uh, pull request let's see i'm going to get the pwa roots and I'm going to say that I'm going to run it not from Rails PWA, but just from PWA, because I don't have the latest version of Rails running here at the moment. I will go and create a PWA controller. And uh, I'm going to copy the content from the Rails PWA controller. Let's try again. Okay, so uh, we're going to run the service worker and manifest from uh, uh, the views uh, app, app slash views, but not from uh, uh, the public folder. So I'm going to go to uh, app views. Here I will create a new folder named PWA and I'm going to move the manifest and the service worker into this PWA folder. Uh, okay, so we've got the uh, roots, controller, and uh, two view files. And uh, let's uh, see if uh, this works. I'm going to clear the application cache. Uh, okay, it says that I've got a syntax uh, error somewhere. Let's uh, try clearing the cache uh, once again. Just to be sure that everything works okay. Application. Okay, we've got manifest.json. Let's try navigating to slash manifest.json. Okay, we have uninitialized Rails application controller. Yeah, uh, because uh, I would maybe need to use something like uh, Action, action controller base here. Okay, we've got the manifest. Let's uh, try once again. I will go to inspect application. The manifest is uh, read nicely. The service worker is running. And now we've got uh, everything from our views folder. So uh, in theory, you could uh, have uh, the path uh, to this image, for example, set uh, not from the public folder, but uh, from the assets. Uh, yes, that's uh, basically it for this uh, episode. We managed to add the manifest and the working service worker into a Rails app, and now it is uh, installable. So that's it. Thanks for being with me, and see you in the next one.